G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to do another edition of Would You Rather. It's been a little while since we've done this. If you're unfamiliar, you give me two scenarios to pick from and I have to choose which one I would rather happen. I put up a post on the YouTube community tab and, um, you know, as usual, you guys have come through some, with some really good ones. We don't have as many as usual, but the ones we do have, I thought were pretty good. So thank you for your submissions. Before I crack in, if you could do me a favor, uh, according to my analytics, still 55% of people who watch my videos over the last 28 days have not actually hit subscribe to the channel. So if you are one of those people, and you're enjoying the content, you want to see more footy content, I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to click subscribe, help me grow the channel. We're past 28,000 subscribers now, which is absolutely unreal. Cool. Let's crack straight into it. The first one is from Gary Jeffrey, who says, Would you rather see Ross Lyon pull the Saints out of a premiership slump or see Dimmer Hardwick take the Suns to their first flag? Both of these would be good stories, wouldn't they? Like Ross Lyon coming back to his old club. I mean, he's one of the most successful coaches, I would have to say, to have not won a premiership. He's got a pretty good record, albeit... You know, his time at Fremantle, the rebuild dragged on a long time there and it probably affected his record. And as I record this, like they literally just lost to Fremantle a few hours before I'm recording this. So they're not looking too crash hot. But long story short, it would still be a good story. Equally for Dimmer Hardwick, while it's not quite as romantic because he's already, you know, achieved a dynasty team in Richmond, it still would be huge for his legacy and also the other narrative of the Gold Coast Suns football club actually winning a premiership. That would be pretty wild. What would I rather see? I'd probably rather see a Gold Coast one, but I would probably... You know, find it in my heart to be happy for St Kilda. I'm not sure I'm a huge Ross Lyon fan, if I'm going to be completely honest, but the Saints fans have been long-suffering. So I'd probably rather see... Oh, I'd pr Depends when it is. Like, if we're talking this year, I'd probably rather see St Kilda get one first, but Gold Coast winning one would probably be good for the comp as well. The next one is from Ollie's on the Ball, who says, would you rather be Alistair Clarkson or Adam Uze right now? This is a really good one. And I, I'm both comparable because they're both bottom two teams, both in distinctly different parts of the rebuild, I would say, whereas North Melbourne have accumulated a lot of young talent. They're taking some high draft picks. Richmond are really at the top of the cycle right now where they know they're not good, uh, albeit they're exposed by injuries at the moment, and they haven't had that chance, that access to the draft yet, which they will rectify. It will happen in time, but at the moment, they're a lot further back than North Melbourne are. However, they do have a lot more experienced players, and if the question is framed, who would I rather be as a senior coach? Even though North Melbourne have you know years on Richmond in terms of drafting talent, I'm still concerned about their long-term development with the lack of experienced players. And therefore, if we're talking about job security, I think... Clarkson's probably under a little bit more pressure and he's probably not as equipped to get this team competitive quickly because of the lack of senior players. Adam Uze, you know, I think the, the vibe on him is like, how can you really judge him right now as senior coach? And then they're going to be entering rebuild. I, I don't think there's a degree of scrutiny on him right now. So I think in a long-winded way, I think I'd probably rather be Adam Uze at the moment because of that lack of pressure. And, you know, they'll get their draft picks this year and then next year, presuming a whole stack of players don't leave or whatever. They'll still have enough senior bodies there to maybe even finish above North next year. We'll see. AFL All-Star says, Gold Coast Premiership or Collingwood Wooden Spoon? Um, I'd probably rather the Gold Coast Premiership. I'm not particularly anti-Collingwood. I mean, the only reason I probably don't want Collingwood to win a flag this year is just simply because they won one last year. I don't have necessarily any hopes for them winning a wooden spoon. I don't, I don't really care. Um, frankly, I just want us to avoid it. So someone other than us would be great. So definitely the Gold Coast Premiership one on that one. Fidget Frio Fan Man has a sick one. He says the Eagles choke a 100 point three quarter time lead or they lose a game by 300 points. That is disgusting. Both of these would be insane. We've never seen a 100 point turnaround before. I think we had uh, 69 points is the biggest ever comeback and that was in the second quarter. Oh, I think it was 2001 between North and Essendon. So this would be record breaking and headline grabbing for all, all kinds of reasons. That being said, I could probably deal with losing that game if it's like by one point, deal with the horrific, you know, fall out from that game much better than I would if West Coast lost a game by 300 points. Even if that number was 200, I'd probably still rather choke the 100 point lead because it means at some point in the game we were pretty good. Give me a record breaking ch choke over even ugh, another Sydney West Coast game last year, my God. J Dodd 7074 says, would you rather be a North Melbourne or a St Kilda supporter right now? Personally, I, I would choose North, says J Dodd, based on the sheer amount of young potential. So yeah, context, I'm filming this a little bit earlier than you're going to see it, naturally. But 
Essendon has not played North Melbourne yet in round 10 as I record this. And St Kilda has just lost to Fremantle and there's a chance that they finish the round in the bottom four. I think maybe they might finish round 11 in the bottom four. Honestly, like I get the argument for the young talent point, but with North, I still think there's a long road ahead. And St Kilda do have some really good youth as well. I mean, do they have a Harry Sheasel? Maybe not. But their youngsters are very, very good. Like Machido Owens and Wanganee Miller are come to mind. Darcy Wilson's having a great season as I record this. And yeah, Yes, they're horribly underperforming right now, but they've got enough senior players as well to smooth out the transition, if that makes sense. So even if they decide like this group isn't taking them further, they need to hit the draft. They're still not completely starting from scratch. They've still got a pretty good baseline of talent. And I think North will probably still have to deal with some losing streaks. Like they'll win games this year, but I think it would be harder to be a North Melbourne fan over the next few years, to be honest. Ground Up Footy says, would you rather have two elite key forwards two elite key defenders, or a once-in-a-generation ruck such as Nick Nat Nui, but he doesn't get injured. I like this one. Obviously, a big Nick Nat Nui fan. Um, I think that if I could choose, you'd probably go two elite players. Whether you go forward or back is the next question. I think I think finding those elite key forwards is probably harder and probably has the most value. So if it's like a Mackay and Kurnow, both of those players are elite right now. I mean, you comfortably take that over Nick Nat, I reckon, in my opinion. And you could probably find some very good defenders quite cheaply as well. Key forwards, I feel like are hard to access in the draft. Like you got to have a top end pick usually. So therefore it'd probably be cheaper in an economical sense to go for the key forward. But I think, you know, a dynamic key forward duo, that is probably the baseline of a really good team. Ground up footy also says, would you rather have pick one of last year's draft? So Harley Reid or pick two and three, McKercher and Jed Walter. So I think clearly pick two and three was better. Like West Coast apparently went for it and North Melbourne rejected it which implies that both of those teams thought two and three were more valuable. And I would agree with that. As good as Harley Reid is, um, particularly if you assume that Jed Walter is on the open market. So you've, you've put Jed Walter in brackets. I'm going to assume that I have access to him. The gap between Harley Reid and Jed Walter wasn't astronomical. Jed Walter is an outstanding young key forward talent and will be a very good player. I think you go McCurtain and Walter. We'll see though, but I think playing the odds there, I think you go two picks instead of the one, as good as Harley Reid is. AFL Snap says, would you rather go to a Darwin game or a Tasmania game? In brackets, so hot or cold. So if we're talking about climate here. Um, I probably deal with the warm better. Like I've grown up in the Middle East, Bangkok and Perth, like pretty th- three pretty hot climates. I live in England now. Definitely would prefer the warm, but I, I think even as well, like as beautiful ta- as Tassie is, I went there as a kid and I know that it's a nice place to go. I would happily watch football in either place, but I think there's a real sense of place of watching Darwin. Like you can see by the crowd, like it had a very cool, but it almost like local footy vibe to an actual AFL game. And I just think there's a real sense of place and vibe about going to a Darwin game, which I haven't done, but I think that would be my preference for the cultural aspect as much as anything. Cam has asked, which would you pick for being worse? Port's defense or Frio's forward line? This is harsh. I don't think Port's defense is too bad, to be honest. I think their forward line is actually their weak link at the moment. Um, I think mean, we did an AFL underrated, overrated video last week and did a bit of a stats de- deep dive on their underperforming forward line. Frio's forward line, I don't think is, is putrid. I think it's just that the best young talents are young. Like Tracy and Amos look like good players. Jackson maybe as that third tall, that's the trio that they'll roll with. But I mean, they've lost a few soldiers in there. Like Lockie Schultz comes out of that. And I know that as I record this, he hasn't had an amazing year at Collingwood, but he was a very reliable and good player for Fremantle. So they've still got some holes to plug there. So that's probably the reason I'd go Port Adelaide. Like if I've planned a grand final tomorrow and I could transplant either Port's defense or Frio's forward line, I'd probably go Port's defense. Oliver Preston says, have Ollie Wines or Luke Parker in your team? That's a good question. I presume you mean right now or uh, rather than over the stretch. I mean, I think Ollie Wines is playing some good footy at this moment. I think over the stretch though, even though Ollie Wines won a Brownlow medal, I think Luke Park has been such a champion and he hasn't won any medals or anything that I'm aware of, but I would probably go Parker over the stretch. Graz comes in with a pretty good one actually. Sarong or Rao? This is a good one. I, I think these are pretty comparable players, like very inside dominant players, both having a really good year. I feel like maybe Rao at his best might be better than Sarong. In terms of like in-game impact, like maybe that he ends up that way. But I think Sarong has him covered this year, to be honest. I think Sarong has actually been pretty damn good. As has Rao, 
as has Rao, but Sarong's probably been a little bit more consistent, dare I say it. I mean, Rao's probably only had a couple of quiet games, but Sarong is just week in, week out. Very good. And they're both match winners in their own way, actually. Yeah, you know, think about it. I can think of big game moments both of these players step up. So I actually really like this comparison. Maybe Sarong right now, but I do wonder at the end of their careers whether Rao might actually edge him. Ollie's on the ball says, AFL game in snow or hail? As in to watch or to play? To watch, hail would be kind of funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Provided nobody gets hurt. I, I've never actually been caught in like actual hail. I've seen it out the window. Does it hurt to get hit by hail? It probably would, right? Side note, I was in America and for the first time in my life, I saw it hail on a 30 degree day. It was 30 degrees outside. It suddenly got overcast. It hailed massive golf balls and then went back to being 30 and sunny. I've never seen that before. Maybe it's a normal thing. I don't know. I always associate it with like cold winter days. That was a first. If I'm playing in it and I have to consider whether you know, it hurts to get hit by hail. I'd probably rather snow. I'd imagine if it hailed in an actual game that they would have to stop it, at least temporarily. Naga says, would you rather the pies Nick Dacos or Port Sack Butters? This is a really good one too. And I think it's actually pretty tight between these two players, particularly given the fact that Dacos is now playing quite a bit on ball, um, which is probably the caveat I would have had against him. Like I would have always gone the primary midfielder, the offensive midfielder who is dangerous every week and who's ripping the ball out of center, driving the ball inside 50, kicking goals. I think they're both doing that now. I think they're both doing that now. Like right in this current point of time, I, I find them very hard to split. And I am increasingly on the Dacos bandwagon. He is very, very damn good. And just so clutch. Oh man, it's hard to pick for right now. Over the course of their careers, I think I might go Dacos. If it's like playing in a grand final tomorrow, oh, maybe Butters, but... I can't really articulate why. I've watched Dacos closely over the last few weeks and um, he's really sold me. Maybe maybe I would actually go Dacos. I don't know if that's that's fair. That's a tough one. I, I, I'm a big fan of both of those players. El Valador says, your least favorite team wins the premiership. Would you rather play them in the said grand final or get the spoon that year? I think this one's pretty simple for me. If I have to accept that I mean I don't for a start have a real least favorite team but I think for the purposes of this let's assume it's Fremantle <laughs> just because there's like a rivalry there absolutely like I don't want them to win the premiership absolutely that's true even if I don't hate them uh that being said I think I would rather win the spoon that year I mean it would suck either way having said that losing a grand final to them would probably mean that the derby differential I think we're up eight derbies by now. I don't think we could use that anymore if we lost in a grand final to them. Random Stream says, would you rather Raul Miller and Anderson or Oliver Petrarca and Vani based on this season? I think based on this season, it might be tight actually. I'd probably say that Petrarca, I think has actually been the best of the lot. I think Petrarca has been unreal and he is outstanding and almost gets slept on, I reckon, by the broader AFL watching community. A um, lot of buzz about Anderson and Raul right now. I think Viney started the year really well. I've kind of lost track of whether he's still playing well. I presume maybe. And Oliver has been sidelined a little bit, obviously coming back from uh, you know all the off-field stuff. Maybe on this season you go Raul, Miller, and Anderson. Um, you know, Raul's the number one clearance player in the comp, number one contested ball player as well. Or if he's not number one, he's very close, and so he's like the second best tackler in the comp. Maybe just give the points to Gold Coast on that one. But um, ask me again if it's in a grand final because Christian Petrarca, he he steps up when the game's there to be won. Play on Footy asks, would you rather put Adelaide or the Suns to win the 2024 Premiership? So specifically this season, I'd probably rather see Port win it. It's been a while since they've won one. They haven't won one in 20 years. And I think as good as it would be for Gold Coast to win one, I'd rather see this slow build of narrative. I'd like to see them play finals for the first time. I'd like to see them win their first final. I don't want it all necessarily come at the same time. All in good time, but if it was this season, I think Port Adelaide deserve it more. User YW1 says, would you rather Dacos or Heaney? I think Heaney's clearly the number one player at the moment. Um, so, you know, if I was playing in a grand final tomorrow, it's got to be Isaac Heaney. He's been unreal. Number one player, in my opinion, anyway. Dacos has also been sensational. Um, and, you know, if you were, if I was starting a new team, you'd go the 21-year-old Dacos. And I feel like Dacos is going to have one of those careers where he's just good every season. But, and I think he could play into his 30s. Like, I'm getting Pendlebury trajectory from him. So, Heaney right now, Dacos if I was starting a new team. Magpies 2 with the final one says, Jake Waterman wins the Coleman medal, but Allen doesn't return for the rest of the year. Or, Allen returns immediately and Waterman goes back to what he, what he was. If there is a future where Oscar Allen and this version of Jake Waterman can coexist in the same forward line, but it doesn't start till next year, 
I'd probably go with the first one. I'd say Waterman wins the Coleman, but Allen doesn't return for the rest of the year. Because while it'd be nice to have Allen back, you know, I don't want to give up Waterman's amazing form. It'd be awesome to see them play in the same forward line and work in tandem. I think that could possibly work, um, but we'll see. Hopefully we get both. Hopefully Allen comes back this year and Waterman stays in relatively good form. But that's all we got. Thank you very much for your submission, guys. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me do this again, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.